a single mom for so long, being able to buy a house. It was always something I wanted for my daughter, but it was always out of the picture. I was not very good with my money. I was living paycheck to paycheck. She was very nervous about buying a home, and she didn't think that we could do it. Total help? Yes, I would To buy or not to buy has never been a simple decision. That won't fit in here. And this ever-changing housing market isn't making it any easier. With surging mortgage rates, record-breaking rents and home prices, a potential economic downturn, and other lifestyle considerations, there's so much to factor in. This is an extraordinarily unique market because of the pandemic and because there was such a run on housing. So you have home prices very high, you also have rents very high. On average, across the 50 largest United States metro areas, a typical renter pays about 40% less in rent than a first-time homeowner. However, that's not the case for everyone. We'll be paying close to the same amount, but not have any of the amenities. It just makes more sense to make this move. Prospective homeowners and investors often travel across the country and sometimes even the world, seeking more affordable markets. Right now, a few of those places are Cleveland, Ohio, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Baltimore, Maryland. It doesn't matter if the market going to crash or not. Something going to happen, but we're not sure what. Maybe it's going to be back again, maybe it's not. We're going to keep going, doing it. I was at work and I get a phone call from Stephanie and she said that they had to evacuate the apartment. It didn't register at first. I still would choke up thinking about it. I just raced home and the police um, tape was over. I didn't know where she was at. Her and the three girls were like just in tears. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like talking about it. Leland and Stephanie Jernigan had to move out of their Cleveland apartment in January 2019. A neighboring apartment had a fire, forcing them to stay with family for a few days, and then a hotel. Just 10 days after Stephanie gave birth to their daughter, Tatum. She slept in her car seat the first night because we had nowhere to put her. Leland Jernigan always dreamed of purchasing a home of his own, but that fire put a wrench on his plans. I had a little over $5,000 saved. The U.S. is in a rental housing crisis. So we pay $3,060 per month. If I'm really honest, I don't think it's a very good value for money. Homebuilders believe the sector is already in a recession, and experts are calling out laws that make building expensive. 40% of the cost of multifamily development is in regulation. We have to do something about that if we're going to build more housing. Developers have a really hard job, and they regularly work magic. In major cities like Washington, D.C., developers are working with limited space. Most parts of this country have exclusionary zoning. The only thing you can build there is single-family homes, often on pretty large lots. But in the parts of town where big buildings are allowed, you see a lot of cranes going up. Those cranes are going to build high-rise luxury apartments. And in fact, this year we're going to see some of the largest number of apartments delivered in the luxury sector than in history, literally. Why are there so many new luxury apartments? And what could the government do to get more affordable housing onto the market? When it comes to city real estate, the biggest luxury is location. If you can just walk from your apartment into a metro station and, and head on about your day, that's pretty great. Here's a look inside of one new development in the city. Right now, we are in the ballpark district of Washington, D.C., one of the emerging neighborhoods that is downtown adjacent. And this neighborhood has gone through a tremendous transformation over the last 20 years as part of an overall plan to create an extraordinary place. This building was completed in uh, 2020. And this is the Kelvin Apartments, uh, which is uh, 312 apartments over about 60,000 square feet of retail adjacent to our, our sister building, which is the NV Condo, which is 127 condos. This development is currently valued at roughly $230 million. Transit-oriented development creates the best outcomes overall because of the proximity to jobs, the proximity to educational opportunities, but is also the most difficult. 
you're creating not only deep foundations for underground parking, you are uh, often uh, building over um, metro lines and, and, and transit lines. You're also taking care of, of uh, the neighborhood in terms of its aesthetic. Living in this lifestyle does cost a premium for the renter. Two bedroom apartments in this building can rent for over $3,000. Single bedrooms can rent for over $2,000. Perhaps more surprisingly, those prices are technically affordable for 40% of the households in Washington, D.C. And this pattern where the top 40% of earners can afford housing. Hi friends, it's Tisha Powell. Go ahead and hit that free like and that free subscribe button. That way we'll know that bringing you the real estate news is something you want. So we talked today about, we watched today on CNBC and you saw that there's a struggle to buy homes and we see that the single family homes and just the housing market in the United States is like <gasps> all over the place. So you're going to learn three things today. What can you afford, how to find a home and what the lender wants. Okay, 4,800 lenders, you need to get pre-approval mortgage. The three things the lender want to see, your credit score, three months of bank statements, two years of tax return. So get that get a lender's application, complete the application as well. And lenders want to see down payment. How can you get a down payment? Well, there are three bad debt that you have that you should try to get rid of. Your student loans, your car payment, and your credit card. Do you know that the average person is paying 527 per month for a car payment? Do you know if you do that 527 a month, 10 months, that's $5,270? Do you know Zilla has a special with 1% down? You need 3% to get your first home. If it's an FHA and you're in the United States, if you are out of town, a foreign national, you will need 30% of the purchase price. It's not a lot considering you can get a townhome in the United States for two sixty-five. So thirty percent, six one six six two twelve six three is eighteen. That is seventy-eight thousand dollars. That's not bad. And obviously, if you're looking into a hundred thousand, but what if you are looking in Canada? Canada, like you can get something nice in Quebec, hundred thousand. Whoa, one bedroom. So uh, 30% of that is 30000 So you can buy a real estate probably almost anywhere in the world, but you're going to need a deposit, a down payment, and you need a lender in that that country. So I would say that I'm even looking into going to buy real estate in Canada, and I'm, I'm a U.S. citizen. Why am I doing that? Canada seems to be cheaper than America these days, and a lot of Americans are leaving to Canada. So we need 30% down for Canada. But let's say you're a first time home buyer in the United States, you're gonna need 3% from FHA. Zillow is giving you 1%. A town home is 265. You need to save 2%. Get rid of the car payment, $500 per month. So three things I'm gonna teach you how to afford a home. Let's look now, I'm on the internet, I went to Google, and I'm gonna go property for sale, Arizona. Arizona, Phoenix, okay, Phoenix, Arizona, and I saw on Zillow, there's like 2788, so I'm going to narrow it down to townhome for sale, Arizona, townhome for sale, Phoenix, Arizona, Phoenix is nice, it's warm, you know, I like warm places, all right, so Zillow came up first, I click on Zillow, I see a two bedroom, a three bedroom for $300,000. So I click on it and it show me ESD estimate payment 2037. So it even have on there get pre-qualified. So basically you could use Zillow to get a home these days. It, okay, so what I'm going to do now, it showed me the estimate payment on 300,000 is 2037 per month. I am going to look on Zillow's, I click on that little I next to it. It has a legal disclaimer. Then I'm going to go and look at what percent. So 210 for the HOA is 2,100 square feet. That's 1,600 square feet. That's a lot. Three bedroom, two bath. And it's a townhome and it's, it's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Okay. So now when I go down to get pre qualified for a loan, I can get a lender there or I can just call one of the lenders 
and I'm click scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. Price, it sold in 2021 for 260. The properties are on the way up. So I go down to the history. The taxes are 594. I go to monthly cost. So I see the principal and interest are 1605. There is no mortgage insurance. Property taxes 117. Property insurance 105. HOA 210. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to click on that principal interest. So the arrow clicked. And then I see that they're doing 20%. So I'm going to change that to 3%. And that's $9,000. And my interest rate is 7000 And now my payments are 2616 So the difference is if I put 20% down, I'm at 2037 principal interest tax insurance. If I put 3% down, I'm at 26. I'm paying a difference of $600 per month. Okay, so where would I get the money from? Like I said, Zillow has a special program that you can get 1%. So if you can save $500 a month for 10 months, that's $5,000. And then, as you could tell, you're paying a difference of $600 more per month. But if you do not have a $500 payment, you could also get a roommate. You could get a roommate. You could Airbnb one part of the bedroom. So, you know, you've got to think creative. You know, the trick is to get the home first and then worry about stuff later. You've got to come up with a down payment. I'm Tisha Paul. Go ahead and watch this segment again. Uh, friends, go ahead and hit that free like and that free subscribe button. We are going to have some more premier membership. We're going to release certain real estate. As you know, I'm a security attorney in New York, USA. I've been dabbing in and out of real estate since I was 18 years old. I bought up a lot of real estate. I had a portfolio once with 15 units. It's just incredible. Um, I thought I built properties as well. And check out the Nima Marcus products, the Nima Marcus tag products today. Check them out. They are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. You've got to check them out. Call a lender. That's what you need if you're going to buy real estate in the United States. Call a lender in the United States. If you're going to buy real estate in Canada, call a lender in Canada. Wherever the property is located, that's where the lender needs to be. That's the country that you are going to call. And yes, anybody can buy real estate in the United States. You need 30% down. You can get a foreign national loan, but you have to call a lender in the United States. We have 4,800 lenders. Get a loan application, a mortgage application. I'm Tisha Powell. We'll see you another time.